Chapter 5 Buelo and Max made themselves comfortable in their usual places, Max on the sofa and Buelo with a cup of coffee in the overstuffed chair that sagged in all the right places. Lola walked in circles and finally lay on the tiles in front of the fireplace. This time of year, the firebox was cold, and the grate cradled only brooms of herbs that Buelo had collected. Max caught a whiff of dried rosemary, which always made him think of summertime and storytelling. You first, said Buelo. Today I was wondering about the Rio Bobinado. Max told him his story about the gargantuan, gigantic serpent with the indecisive spirit creating the chasm that became the coiling river. Buelo nodded. A serpent that could not make up his mind. Perhaps that's why anyone who travels the river, river's path is plagued with uncertainty and apprehension, meaning people that follow the river are nervous and they don't really know what's going to happen. They're not sure where it's going to take them. Is that true, Buelo? Buelo smiled. It could be. We all face something in life that is a mystery no matter which way we look, or where no matter which way we look, there's no satisfying answer. Buelo shrugged. But such is the challenge of life. Your story reminds us of that. Max put his hands behind his head, letting the idea settle. He liked that his story could have a double, double meaning, one he hadn't even considered. Miss Dominguez said that a good story left you wondering. The next time he saw her, if Papa wasn't around, he would tell her this one. Buelo held up a finger. My turn. How about the secret bridge and the guarda barrera? I'll need a little help in the retelling. Mm, remind me, how do I begin? Max smiled. You know, once upon a time, he prompted. Buelo cleared his throat. <clears throat> once upon a time, a grandfather told his grandson a true story. Max giggled. You say that every time. Buelo swept an arm toward the window and cleared his throat. Once upon a time, in the north, far away, hidden. There was a secret bridge, which was only discussed in whispers among bridge builders and their descendants and the chosen ones. He held a finger to his lips. In fact, it still exists, so you must promise not to ever tell anyone about it. I promise, Buelo. Before you reach the secret bridge, you must first cross a glorious span with three arches. It glows pink in the morning sun, the bridge of a thousand mallards. A kind of a duck, you know, with the green head and the brown and black and white body. Well, that makes for a lot of quacking, said Max, a thousand mallards. To be sure, said Buelo, and after you cross the bridge to river left, do you remember what that is? Max nodded. Yeah, if I'm looking downstream, that's the bank on my left. Very good. After you cross to river left, you follow the bank north for another hour until the channel grows weary of all its meanderings and loses its long ribbon becoming deep and calm. It is there that you will come upon what looks like a dead-end cove, but it's an inlet that leads to, the, leads to the hidden arm of the river, said Max. That's where the secret bridge is. Who's telling the story, said Bueno. But you are right. At the back of what looks like a cove, just sort of like a, a clearing, an opening, a bend in the river, you'll see a bridge that is so overgrown with vines and shrubs or bushes that it creates a wall of green, obscuring, obscuring anything on the other side. There is a peculiar gatekeeper, a guarda barrera, that lives beneath that bridge. She determines who may travel beyond. And because she lives in a cavern, a cave, some say she is a troll with gray skin and yellow eyes and warts and a no nose too big for her face, or a river witch, said Max. Which is she? Buelo smiled. I will only confirm that she is a creature of great wisdom and intrigue with a mesmerizing aura. She is the keeper of lost things, a collector of sorts. Her cavern is crowded from ceiling to sod. There you might come to retrieve what you have lost or deliver something you have found that someone might be looking for someday. Like what? 
Well, perhaps you lost something of deep meaning when you were on a picnic on a riverbank, or a piece of jewelry or something of sentimental value. Maybe you've lost your way in life or cannot find answers to perplexing questions. She can help. Max wondered if the Guarda Barrera knew where his mother was and if she could help him find her so Max could return the compass. Papa had said that she treasured it. He clutched the compass, rubbing the smooth glass with his thumb. But sadly, very few are willing to travel to meet her face to face. Because they're afraid of what she might be, said Max. Yes, but the strong and determined, such as yourself, they will find her. Max smiled and sat up a little straler, straighter. He was glad Buelo presumed such a thing, even if it was only a made-up story. When you reach the cavern door, you must knock four times, and she will call out, Who stands before me? And you will answer, A pilgrim, true of heart, said Max. And when she opens the door, you will introduce yourself. I am Maximiliano Feliciano Esteban Cordova, son of Feliciano Cordova Jr. and grandson of Feliciano Cordova Sr. And she will say, prompted Buelo, I am Jadra, nothing more and nothing less. Buelo nodded. If you're very fortunate and indeed true of heart, she may invite you on a journey upriver where you might, he cupped his fingers. Hold in the palm of your hand. Oh, I cupped his fingers. She might. Hold in the palm of my hand. Sorry. Hold tomorrow in the palm of my hand. But how will that help me? Asked Max. Oh, so much might be realized by glimpsing what is yet to come. Wouldn't you want to know if the path you are on is leading to the place you want to go? The knowledge might inspire you to change how you live today. Wouldn't you like answers to the questions that puzzle you? Max nodded. He would like to know if he'll make that football team and where his mother was and if she's ever coming home. He sat up. You met the guarda, guarda barrera, abuelo, right? Many times, although it's been quite a few years now. Once we even had tea, which she served in a china cup. And I went on that journey. You held tomorrow, whispered Max. What did it feel like? I suppose it might be different for everyone. For me, one moment it was warm and syrupy, like a cinnamon pastel just from the oven. And the next, cool and smooth like a rock pulled out of the riverbed. Mostly, though, tomorrow was very slippery. As soon as I thought I'd captured it, swish, it slid through my fingers and was gone. Was your path leading to the place you wanted to go? Buelo nodded. Oh, yes. How did you know where the bridge was? asked Max. Buelo held up a finger, his eyes twinkling. A map, of course. Can I see it? All in good time, Maximiliano. But remember, your father would remind us this is just a story. Then again, he's not here. Buelo smiled. Buelo wanted him to believe whether there was a map or not. The clock in the kitchen ticked. Lola snored. Buelo slurped a, slurped a long sip of coffee. Buelo, why is Papa always so serious? He always thinks the worst is going to happen. Your Papa was once very lighthearted, said Buelo, but now he wears his worries and fears like a cloak. The grown-up world robbed him of a bit of his spirit and he lost his belief in happy endings. You mean when my mother left? Borlo nodded. She stole a piece of his spirit? Asked Max. You could say that. Didn't he look for her? He looks for her everywhere he goes. Max thought of the bridges his father had built all over the country. Were those jobs that sometimes kept him away for weeks at a time just excuses to look for her? Maybe the Guarda Barrera could help find her. Buelo sighed. Yes, well, she would have to want to be found. He stood and patted Max's legs. That's enough for tonight. It's past your bedtime and I need to take Lola out. Now promise me that when you grow up and meet the Guarda Barrera, you will tell her hello from me. 
Max smiled and went along with Buelo's fantasy. I promise. <laughs> Good night, Maximiliano. Te quiero. Max's heart swelled. Good night, Buelo. I love you too. Before he climbed into bed, he stood in front of the small window in his room and looked up. The world was moonlit, and on the distant cliff top, La Reina Gigante glowed, diminutive and delicate, as if he could reach out and hold her hand. Fog wrapped around the tower's waist. A trailing mist drifted at her sides. She was a guardian angel with outstretched arms. Max slipped the lever leather cord with the compass off his neck and carefully set it on the windowsill. Then, like the hidden ones, he prayed to the giant queen for protection and guidance. La reina, please watch over my papa, my abuelo, my aunties, and uncle, Lola, and me. And can you please watch over my mother too, wherever she is? <laughs>